Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how I make large batches specifically of face washes. And this is me making my aloe facial cleanser I sell over on Etsy. Of course, I'm not going to be giving away the formulation, but giving you guys a good idea on how I make large batches of facial cleansers. So first I start out with a 1000 milliliter glass beaker, a 100 milliliter glass beaker, a 400 milliliter glass beaker, and then another 100 milliliter glass beaker. And I use all these beakers for different phases. So I can individually weigh out each phase into a different beaker. And you can see on the screen here which beaker is for which phase. So of course I start out with my digital scale that weighs to 0 0.01 grams. And I start with my 1000 milliliter glass beaker and I weigh out my water phase ingredients. So then I will place my beaker in a pan, cover it with aluminum foil, and heat it up to heat up all of the water ingredients. Next, I take my 100 milliliter glass beaker and weigh out my gelling phase, which is Silagel and Xanthan gum. Then I'll take my 400 milliliter glass beaker and weigh out my surfactant phase, which is my two surfactants of choice, and then a carrier oil. In the past, I always put the carrier oil in the water phase, which always worked out fine, but you find better results adding it to the surfactant phase instead. And then I will go ahead and grab my other 100 milliliter glass beaker and weigh out my cool down phase. And these are all my cool down ingredients, my preservative, my extracts, all that kind of stuff. And then I'm going to go back to my surfactant phase and just blend the oil and surfactants together. So here are my three phases my surfactant phase, my cool down phase, and then my gelling phase, which is xanthan gum and Scylla gel. And then of course my water phase is right here. And now that is all done being heated. Currently it's at 142 degrees Fahrenheit. I heat it up in order to dissolve my Scylla gel and xanthan gum in it. So I start out by just pouring a little bit of the gelling mixture into the water phase, blend it with an immersion blender, add a little bit more, blend it again, and just keep doing this until I have it all incorporated. And then this is when I go ahead and add in my mica powder to add some coloring to my facial cleanser. And you want to blend the mica powder in with the immersion blender as well to just break up the powder and the formulation. So recently I actually did a video over on my Patreon of me experimenting with xanthan gum. And I actually found that incorporating xanthan gum in with the glycerin first, you'll actually find better results incorporating it into your distilled water. That way you actually don't have to heat it up and then mix it in that way. So if you're having issues dissolving xanthan gum into water, go check out my Patreon and you will understand exactly how to incorporate xanthan gum into glycerin first before adding it into distilled water. So in the future you may be seeing me use this glycerin method rather than the method that I just used here in this video where I heated up the water phase and then added in the xanthan gum and silica gel and then blended it up. So I just want to give you guys a heads up on that. Alright, so back to the normal video. After I have the water phase Blend it up with the Scylla gel and xanthan gum. I'm going to go ahead and add in the rest of my water phase, which is some aloe vera liquid. And then I just mix that in. And I kind of use this method in order to cool down my formulation a bit. And it definitely cools it down quite a bit. It cooled it down to 90 degrees. And if you remember, it, it was at 147 degrees. And then after that, I just slowly incorporate my surfactant phase. I add in a little bit and then I mix it in and just keep doing this until it's completely incorporated. And now it's time for the cool down ingredients. I just do the same thing. I add in a little bit at a time and then I mix it in and I just keep doing this until it's completely incorporated. And just a little tip for you guys, always check the bottom of your beaker to make sure everything's incorporated because I notice everything just settles to the bottom when you pour it in. So looking at the bottom, making sure everything's blended is a good way to make sure you have it all mixed together nicely. And then I just covered my beaker with aluminum foil, write down what the formulation is and the date I made it. And then I grab a gallon baggie and then I store it in my little baggie for 24 hours. And I do this just to let any bubbles from the surfactant settle because sometimes it can get kind of like fluffy and, you know, just kind of lathery and foamy. And I just want to let it settle for about 24 hours. I do this method with most products I make. So after 24 hours, my formulation is all ready to be pH balanced and pH tested. So what I like to do is, well, First off, I want to let you guys know I got a new pH meter and I did a review over this pH meter. It was a review and unboxing and a tutorial on how to calibrate it. So I definitely recommend going and watching that video. I'll link it down below. I love this pH meter and I definitely recommend it. In order to test the pH, the first thing you want to do is add in about a 10% 
amount of your facial cleanser and then 90% distilled water and dissolve the facial cleanser in with the distilled water. And I'll actually do a more detailed video on this method here soon. And I'll just do a detailed tutorial on how to take pHs of like thick liquids or like facial moisturizers and stuff. But anyways, the next thing you want to do is take your pH meter and then you want to rinse it in just a just a beaker of distilled water, that's all this is right here. And then turn your pH meter on and then dip it into your 10% diluted solution of your facial cleanser. And you don't have to worry about the distilled water like raising the pH because distilled water really fluctuates the pH levels very easily. So it may be like 0.2 pH like higher, but really it's not much that'll make much of a difference at all. Like I said, I'll go into more detail on this method in another video. But you just want to swish around your pH meter into your little diluted solution for about a minute just to make sure you get a stable pH. And here we are at 5.67 pH level. So this doesn't need to be lowered or raised or anything. And I will actually do a whole other video on how to raise and lower pH levels in the method that I use in the future as well. So I have a lot of pH videos coming in the future. So look out for those. I'll actually create an entire uh, playlist of all those videos. So then you just want to rinse your pH meter in your distilled water solution. And I just swish it around in there for a little bit. And I just dab it dry using a paper towel. Make sure you don't touch the glass electrode at all. And then you just recap your pH meter. And I actually want to show you guys my old pH meter, how uh, the pH level is different from the new one I got. So of course I'm just rinsing it in distilled water real quick before I place it into my diluted solution. And then I will just let it sit in my diluted solution for about a minute, make sure I get a stable pH, and it's reading 5.64. So it's not reading much different than the new pH meter I got. So I actually found that this cheap pH meter that costs like less than $20, it's actually pretty accurate for a cheap pH meter. So that's good to know. And then I just dab it clean with a paper towel and recap it. So now it's time to package up all of my facial cleansers. And I just do this by placing my bottle on my scale and then just pouring in my facial cleanser. And I just keep doing this until I run out of facial cleanser. And here are all my facial cleansers all bottled up. And then obviously I will just cap them with my little pump caps. And bam, there you go. This is how I make big batches of my facial cleanser. So I know this may not seem like a giant batch of facial cleanser, but this is a big batch to me. And I like to make my cosmetics in small batches. So technically to me, this is a big batch, but definitely not a big batch compared to big corporations out there because they make giant batches of their cosmetics. But anyways, now it's time for the Patreon shoutouts. First is Essence of Nature over on Etsy, at Stardust Bath and Body over on Instagram, Nature's Farm Girl at naturesfarmgirl.com, Kennedy's Essentials at kennedysessentials.net, Let's Blend at letsblend.bigcartel.com, Creative with Love at creativewithlove.me, Trina's Jewelry Box over on Etsy, Wildflower Wildflower at wildflowerwildflower.com, Heartfelt Beauty here on YouTube if you want some more formulating videos, HSB Organics at hsborganics.com, I am Beautia at iambeautia.com, Sugared underscore pineapple over on Instagram, KAJ Bath and Body over on Etsy, Blue Mint Soaps at bluemintsoaps.com, and Satara here on YouTube. I'll have all my lovely patrons linked down in my description box. Also, if you guys didn't know, I do sell skincare products myself over on Etsy. I'll have it linked down below and down in the description box for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me making a large batch of my facial cleanser. I've had a lot of requests to make a video on how I make large batches of cosmetics. I was thinking about doing one on how I make large batches of lotions because I received a request for that. So let me know if you guys would like to see that down in the comments. Hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye! I'm stuck in the motions I've been consumed by the wrath of time Like I'm thrown I'm shattered in this life It's still the path that I've chosen Because I've had a vision Now I'm on a mission to find myself